Welcome to the 2022 Candidates Forum, sponsored by Wallingford Community Women in conjunction with Wallingford Government Media. I'm Kathy Shavey, the program moderator. This segment features the candidates running for State Representative 85th District. The format will be as follows. The first part of the program will consist of questions asked of the candidates by two reporters from the Record Journal. They are Jessica Sims, Wallingford reporter, and Lau Guzman, reporter for the Latino Communities Reporting Lab. The second part will allow each candidate to make a closing statement. Carrie Lentz was unable to attend this evening's program. As there are many issues facing residents for the coming term, we are giving Mary Mashinsky the opportunity to answer the reporter's questions. During the question and answer portion of the program, she will have two minutes to respond to a question. To conclude the program, the candidate will have three minutes to make closing remarks. Before beginning the questioning, I'd like to introduce the candidates running for State Representative 85th District. Mary Mashinsky, Democrat. Carrie Lentz, Republican, is unable to attend due to a conflict in her schedule. Ms. Sims, will you ask the first question of Ms. Mashinsky? Anyone who pulls up to a gas pump or takes a trip to the grocery store has seen the costs of fuel and consumer goods and food increase tremendously throughout 2022. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics and its Consumer Price Index report in September stated area prices are generally up 7.2% in the Northeast region. If elected, what actions would you take to address inflation and reduce the cost of energy, groceries, and other consumer goods and services for Connecticut residents? Well, there are a couple things that come to mind. Uh, first one is, although inflation is worldwide, we can reduce prices here. We can reduce impact of inflation prices here in Connecticut. Uh, this session, we reduced uh, taxes by $650 million, and that put more money in people's pockets so they could uh, offset the 7% uh, inflation rate. For example, we gave uh, seniors a tax credit on their retirement um, benefits. We gave uh, child tax credits per child. We gave uh, a higher property tax credit for any age homeowner. Uh, and we took the gas tax off gasoline, the state gas tax. That is a temporary thing, and I would consider doing it again in January. Um, I do want to look at the, um, I'm on the Finance Committee, I do want to look at the uh, consensus revenue estimates in November, end of November, to see where the revenues are before I say we can definitely do it, but we might be able to extend the gas tax holiday if the revenues will support it. Ms. Guzman, will you ask the next question? The COVID-19 pandemic has taken a toll on mental health of many of our children and youth. In Connecticut, according to the CDC, suicide is the second leading cause of death among people ages 10 to 34, and the state overall ranks 11th in the nation. What measures do you propose to help address the situation? Well, right off the bat, um, we invested money in uh, 100 million, actually, in children's mental health. Um, that was our priority issue this year. When the kids were out of school, they were isolated uh, during the pandemic, and it exacerbated some of the mental health issues and some of the um, family uh, disagreements. Kids were trapped at home, and they didn't have their friends to rely on. Uh, what, we are, what we did is put psychologists and counselors in every school system. Uh, we've, we're giving the schools money to pay for that. We also extended um, to 24-7 the uh, available time for mental health SWAT teams to help a child in distress. It used to be that if your child was in distress uh, late at night or maybe on the weekend, the services weren't there. It's now 24-7. If you have a, a midnight crisis or a Sunday morning crisis, uh, you will be able to get mental health help for your child or adolescent. 
So that's a big investment. Um, we think it will help the kids uh, uh, have better mental health care. Ms. Sims, will you ask the next question? Earlier this year, you sponsored legislation intended to enable local law enforcement and courts to do more to respond to youth charged with multiple or repeat motor vehicle thefts. Do you think these measures adequately address issues of juvenile crime and motor vehicle thefts? If not, what further action do you propose? Well, what we did already, uh, which I think will help a lot, is we uh, first made it easier for police to get all the records to uh, the judge, to the courtroom, so the judge knows who is a repeat offender, who isn't. We also approved uh, GPS uh, bracelets on repeat offenders once we know who they are. We um, invested in diversion programs, which uh, did not have enough funding previously, so that when we get a kid who is offending, we can divert them into Youth Services Bureau, um, job training, mentoring, get them away from getting into the criminal life. These kids are working for adults. Um, the adults use them and uh, you know, collect the revenue. I, I myself was uh, hit by one of these youthful thieves in a Walmart parking lot and along with many other folks in Wallingford that this has happened to. And this was a young kid, and uh, I would like to take, I wasn't hurt, um, but I wanted to, I want to take kids like that, get them away from their adult criminal influencers, and get them into um, mentoring, job training, preparing for a career, get them away from these people. Um, so, Hopefully what we did this year will um, allow us to go after the repeat offenders. And uh, we also invested in regional crime, car crime task forces so that uh, police chiefs can work with their neighboring police chiefs to try to break some of these rings. And uh, I already spoke to our police chief and he is very interested in that and working in a regional basis. Ms. Guz Guzman, would you please ask the last question? In 2019, you sponsored an act concerning a green economy and environmental protection. As the country moves forward, one of the ongoing debates is the balance between environmental regulation and business interests. As a representative, how do you balance these competing interests? Well, I think people live in Connecticut because they like a high quality of life and uh, they want to be healthy and enjoy uh, outside life. So, in general, they do support uh, clean air, clean water requirements. Uh, we have an a, um, incoming air pollution problem from states to our west, uh, so we already have it coming in. The more we can do here, uh, it makes it easier to live in a neighborhood, play outside, uh, not get asthma or, um, or uh, other health care problems. The, um, Transition has to be from fossil fuel energy to clean energy. For example, we have wind power coming online, uh, offshore wind power that is coming online and will feed into the grid. We doubled the amount of solar that we allow in Connecticut for uh, rooftop and commercial solar and uh, made the financing easier. Um, this will be a slow transition to clean energy, but we will reap the benefits of it. Our kids will be riding on electric school buses instead of diesel buses at some point in the near future. And uh, we will have better health in the neighborhoods and among our uh, vulnerable populations. We've also been helping with this transition. We've been, the state's been financing the infrastructure for the transition. Thank you. That concludes the question and answer portion of the program. Each candidate will now have three minutes to make a closing statement. Ms. Mashinsky, will you begin, please? Okay, since I'm the only candidate here, I will get right to it. Um, I've been honored to be allowed to serve 
uh, my hometown of Wallingford and uh, to put many years uh, of experience to work to protect the town and to uh, seek funding for the town and uh, can continue to do that if uh, I can earn your support again on November 8th. This year, we did what we could to help you offset the cost of inflation. We did right to the limit uh, as much tax relief as we could do. Uh, if you went over the line, you had to give back the uh, ARPA money, and we didn't do, so we didn't do that. But we did $650 million, which was as much as we could help folks with uh, seniors, um, who have retirement, uh, parents who have children, um, homeowners who own property, and uh, drivers who needed a break on the gas tax. So all those folks got tax relief this year. We did also help improve people's lives. We put $300 million into um, children's mental health, into uh, schools and hospitals. We got Gaylord, $4.5 million, so they could upgrade their technology, we put more money into policing. Uh, we gave the school systems money for their heating, ventilating, and cooling. And we even purchased land for to protect the reservoir in Wallingford on Williams Road. Um, I work very hard to help folks with their casework. Anything to do with a state agency, uh, I work to help them with that. I think I'm better able to serve people of the 85th district than my opponent, who is um, really involved in this race because she is fighting vaccination, um, whereas I'm a uh, multi-issue person that works to make the, improve life in the town and protect the town. And uh, if I go back again, I look forward to serving you. And uh, please come and vote on November 8th. Thank you, and thanks for the, to the sponsors for having this forum. Too bad we had to run it twice because of the <laughs> technical difficulties, but we did. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes the State Representative 85th District segment of the 2022 Candidates Forum. On behalf of the Wallingford community women, I thank you for watching and remind you to vote on November 8th.